Peace, what's happening, everybody? I'm your host and executive producer, James Craze Billings. What I'm going to talk to you today is about Eric B. and Rakim. But it's not just me talking. It's a simple fact that has been overlooked. Now, Eric B. and Rakim, to me, possess the epitome of style, cool, dress, and flavor. But their first album, Paid in Full, had some singles that had a lot of controversy around them which were Check Out My Melody and Eric B for President. So a few years ago, when I was working on the Untold Stories documentary that was featuring the God MC, I came across some interesting information that I feel in the documentary, it was severely overlooked regarding the production of one of the greatest rock and records ever made, Check Out My Melody. Now, the significance is unimaginable today, but back in 1986, Eric B. and Rakim in this particular record shifted hip-hop music forever. So, for the first time in six years since I had this DJ Maniac interview filmed, I'm gonna play it, a portion of it, uninterrupted, because I believe there's a piece of hip-hop history that the culture needs to understand and digest. Now, by no means am I ever trying to discredit Marley Maul Eric B. or Rakim, but what I'm doing is simply shedding light on one of the greatest Rakim records that was ever made. Now, I need you guys to comment, share, and most of all, subscribe to my channel. Let's get into it. The real story behind the record, check out my melody. Soon after that Uptown Harlem party, Kid Wizard would take on a new moniker embracing the 5% nation and teachings of Islam and would change his name to Rakim Allah. Taking rap more serious would make a demo. After the demo was made, a friend by the name of Alvin Tony would introduce Rakim to Eric B. Eric B would take that very demo to hip hop producer Marley Maul. One day I hear knocks at my window or at my door rather, because I I, my bedroom was on the second floor. <clears throat> I look out my window, it's Rakim, he's by himself. I'm like, what's up? He's like, yo, uh, you gotta help me, man. I, I got this melody in my head, I gotta get it out. Like, you know how early it is, man? <clears throat> and uh, he was like, act please. And I was like, all right. Came downstairs, had my equipment set up in the living room at this point, let him in. <clears throat> and he started humming this melody. <laughs> started humming this melody. He was like, can you play that? I'm like, of course I can play that. I mean, your brother taught me how to play the keyboard. So I said, it goes like this. And um, and I played bam, 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 bam. That's what he was humming. And uh, he was like, that's it. So I said, this is easy. So I put it to a beat and um, I recorded the beat and the melody because we did not have a four track recorder at the time. So I used a regular cassette player. The trick is, once you record the beat and the melody, we get a few minutes of that, we stop it, take the tape out, put it in another tape player, and then go to record that. Over that, he was putting his rhymes. <clears throat> and while he was doing the rhymes, I was doing explosions off of records and scratches, things of that nature. And um, that was the first check out my melody done in my living room <clears throat> with scratches, a boss beat machine, uh, sound effects, rock him rapping over this echo chamber. It was an actual, actual echo chamber with a tape in it. And, uh, and that was the first check out my melody. So <clears throat> after we did that, he took the tape. I guess he let his brother hear it. And you know, they came back <clears throat> and Rakim had a uh, talent show at the high school. So they wanted to redo the melody. By this time, me and, and Griff, we had already made this jazz tune that Griff was uh, Griff had invented this jazz too. He taught me how to play this melody while he played the bass line. And, uh, and then he played some chords on top of that while I added some, you know, DJ stuff 
and it was a jazz tune, it was really hot. And Rakim came and laid the melody lyrics over that jazz tune. And we recorded that for his uh, high school talent show. And I didn't go to the talent show. I should have went. But um, <clears throat> I don't know what happened at the talent show. I, I wish I could go back in time and recorded that. You know, that would be archived. But um, that was the second melody. So now, the third melody was made with me, Griff, and Rakim on the jazz tune. And um, then Rakim took one of those tapes, one of those demos over to Alvin Tony, who had Eric B with him. And then Rakim and Eric B took one of those demos to Molly Mall. And I guess they made the, the, uh, the melody you hear on the radio uh, from what me and Rakim made, or me, Rakim, and Blast. It was really what me and Rakim made with the scratches because I noticed that Eric B copied all of my scratches too. Did them a little differently, but um, it's pretty much the, the same elements. They changed the sound of the melody. I think I used a horn and they used a whistle. Something like that, I'm not really sure, but the melody was made in my living room and um, the second melody was made in my basement with me, Griff, and Ra. So Rakim's influence on the neighborhood started to grow. Um, I used to be able to battle rhyme with Ra. We would sit in the car and we'd drink this, this beer. It was strawberry beer from the from the beer house in Wine Dance. <laughs> we used to drink strawberry flavored beer. Or was it raspberry? It was raspberry flavored beer we would drink and sit in my mom's car and battle rhyme. And um, one day we were doing it, you know, we did it often. And one day we were doing it and he actually tore me to pieces. And I don't know how he did that. But from that day on, I could not, I could not hang with him anymore. Uh, I used to be able to run with him. And I wasn't really a rapper, but I could, I could do everything. Anything had to do with hip hop, I could do it. You know, but he had done something, man. And he was, it was a different thing he was doing. And he blew me away. I could never rhyme in front of him again after that. Um, so he started to grow in popularity in the neighborhood. Those tapes that I made were circulating around the neighborhood. And um, at some point, I guess Alvin Tony ran into Eric B. Um, Freddie Fox must have uh, missed the boat. Because um, the rumor has it that he was supposed to show up at that meeting. He didn't. Rakim showed up. And I guess he brought that tape of the melody because Eric B. had to hear something. So they took that tape of the melody and brought it to Molly Maul. So Molly Maul recreated the melody off of what I made. Me and Rakim made the melody. The melody that you hear is pretty much just about the same thing. Um, because uh, Eric B kind of copied my scratches and everything. Cause it was it was a pretty good uh, recording, but um, it wasn't good enough. It was on a cassette tape. So Molly Moore probably did it a little more professional. Uh, and then they did um, Eric B as president. But uh, yeah, the melody was me and Rakim. So when we finally heard Rakim on the radio, the whole neighborhood wine dance was just lit. Everybody was just crazy. And um, even at that time, we was happy to hear him. We did not know the impact that he would have on hip hop, but his rhyme style and uh, the conversations all of us used to have was on deep levels, very deep levels. and. Uh, you know, he's a little younger than me, but uh, he was very mature for his age. 
And somehow the knowledge that we all shared when we had these ciphers, all of us, uh, he eventually started putting that into his rhymes and got more and more complicated using syllables and uh, metaphors and using knowledge. He was influencing people older than him by the knowledge that he had based on his lessons and the lessons we, I would say the lessons we learned growing up because um, there were some deep brothers around. So he was influenced by a lot of good brothers and um, and he had just had his own style with his with his wordplay, and like he'll tell you, he got it from, you know, John Coltrane and those sax riffs, things of that nature, and he put those patterns, probably that he got from his brother Ronnie, and his brother Griff. He put those those jazz patterns into his rhymes, and um, along with his syllables and his knowledge of self. It was, it was something never done before. There was people doing it in their own way, but nobody did it like Rakim. So even then we didn't know the impact he was gonna have until, uh, I'm not sure the year, but it was after a few albums had come out. After the Paid in Full album, it still wasn't clear. It was clear that he made an impact but it wasn't crystal clear what type of an impact he made on the industry. 